Someone once told me that every writer has a subject that underlies everything they write. It can be love or death, betrayal or belonging, home or hope or exile. I choose to think that my subject is love, and most specifically, love for the glittering world of non-human life around us. So my last book, Aegis for Hawk, was a memoir. My new book, Vesper Flights, is something very different. Although there's personal stuff right the way through it, it's a collection of essays. I used to shudder at the word essay. I hated it. It reminded me of school days, and I was the kind of kid who never did their homework on time. I used to get in constant trouble. But I've learned to really love essays and what they are. It seems to me that um, they can do things that longer pieces of writing really can't. Um, the word comes from the French word meaning to attempt or to try. And essays really seem to be attempts in fierce, concentrated attention. They're things fashioned out of love and curiosity and wonder. Every essay in this book is an attempt to capture the astonishing beauty and variety of the world around us and is like one half of a conversation that I want to have with you, the reader. I think essays are a bit like finding interesting things on a walk like this. They're like those moments where your attention is drawn from the sort of background blur onto something singular and unusual. And you want to pick it up and look at it and try and understand what it is and what it means. And um, what I've got here is um, a wood pigeon egg. And you can tell from the way that it's kind of like a, a sort of, it's got a very clean round hole in it, it's serrated around the edges, that this, this egg hatched successfully. And the reason it's here by the side of the lane is that one of the adult birds will have picked it up from the nest and flown off and dropped it. Because it's such a bright shell, it would attract the attention of predators. So basically, the fact that it's lying here is a little bit of protective safety for a pigeon. And like an essay, there's just so much joy in sharing things like that with others. It's such a fun thing to find. Vespa Flights has essays on everything from deer collisions to migraines to glowing beetles to ancient fens, total eclipses of the sun. In it, I climb the Empire State Building to watch birds. I travel with scientists to explore ways of finding life on Mars. I investigate the nature of divinity and I get more than a little obsessed with swans. The title comes from one of the essays. Vesper flights are the dizzyingly high dawn and dusk ascents of swifts, perhaps the most aerial birds on Earth. Swifts make these flights for a reason to assess where they are and forecast oncoming weather. And I hope my book does something similar by paying careful attention to what is around us, it might speak to what is waiting out there on all our horizons. Writing Vesper Flights was fascinating, but something really strange and magical happened when I began to assemble all of the pieces into a collection. They began to speak to one another about the book's deepest themes, and they're themes that course through today's historical moment. They're themes of exile, and love and belonging and, and needing and hope and home. But there are funny things in it too, like the notorious story of the goat at the zoo. It's not just a book about nature. It's a book about where we are now and how we can sustain hope when it seems in such very short supply. I really hope you enjoy it.